the greatest again in all of the areas that we are or some that we have lost. But success is a choice. I have given hundreds of speeches to corporations and groups and organizations throughout my career. People want to be inspired. People want to succeed. We've got to stop telling people that they cannot succeed. I remember giving a speech in San, San Antonio, Texas once. It was at an event that had about a thousand people there. And about 250 of the students that were in the audience, there were students in the audience, about 250 of them. And at the end of my speech, where I had given a speech entitled CEO of Self, Chief Executive Officer of Yourself, and how success is a choice. People came up after us and they wanted to shake my hand, take some pictures, and I noticed that the line kept getting long and long and pretty soon it started to get short and shorter. And there was a young lady, student, in the line who kept moving to the very back of the line. And when she finally got up, <coughs> excuse me, to the front, I said, uh, I noticed you kept getting at the back of the line. She said, Mr. Kane, I wanted to be the last one to shake your hand, and I wanted to thank you. I said, for what? You taught me tonight that I am chief executive officer of myself and my life. People around me have been telling me that I cannot go to college, and tonight I have decided I am going to college because I am CEO of self. Thank you yes. for that inspiration. That's what it means by choosing success. Instill in people that will for them to do what they want to do in life. Number five, ensure a level playing field for all. That's the role of government. Just keep the playing field level. Don't be partial to this group over here. Don't be trying to pick winners and losers. Don't be partial to this group over here. Ensure a level playing field and allow the free market system to do what it does. Number six, work on the right problems and the right priorities. We are in Iowa. I used to live in Omaha, Nebraska. If I was going to go to Omaha, Nebraska, where I met my good friend Jim McClymer, who I haven't seen probably in 15 <laughs> years. If I want to get to Omaha, I don't go west, do I? I got to go south. In other words, if you look at a lot of the stuff that's going on in Washington, D.C., they're not working on the right problem. Let's talk about this debt ceiling mess. First of all, when I'm asked, well, what would I do about it? My answer is, I never would have allowed it to become a crisis in the first place. Amen. That's what leaders do. And then I had a, I was doing an interview that still tried to push me in. Well, what would you do? We, we're in this situation now. I said, let me repeat myself. <laughs> I would not have allowed for it to become a crisis. That's the responsible thing to do as a leader. Seven, ask the people closest to the problem. My, my staff has gotten so used to this that before they even ask me a question, they already know what I'm going to say. Have you talked to the people closest to the problem? You don't come up with answers in an ivory tower. You don't come up with answers in a classroom. If you want to know what people are looking for in a job, go talk to the people that are unemployed. If you want to know what we need to do to put fuel in the engine of this economy, let's go talk to business people. And more importantly, listen to them. <laughs> listen. It's one, thing, it's one thing to say that you want to listen to people to get input and advice. But it's an even bigger thing when you listen to them and you take some of their advice. Number eight, remove communications confusion. I think it was uh, Harry Truman who popularized the statement, if you can't convince, confuse. 
Do we have any confusion in Washington, D.C. right now? The Cain approach will be explain, clarify, and convince. Because if you understand what it is we need to do to get this nation back on track, legislation we need to pass, and you understand it, where's the other one? When the people understand it, they will demand it and they will support it. Aren't you all tired of people telling you they got to pass bills and then tell you what's in it? Yeah. 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 Right. No. I'm going to make sure that you can understand the legislation that I'm going to be asking for. That's how we're going to do that. Look for low-hanging fruit first. My dad taught me that. My dad taught me that. He used some very colorful language to describe that. <laughs> that with all of these cameras here, I dare not say. Or some people are just dying to do another gotcha moment on Herman Cain. But let me give you an example. We have multinational companies that have generated profits in other countries. If they bring those profits back, they're going to be taxed again when they've been taxed in the country where they were generated. So what do most smart business people do? They leave those profits there as long as they can. They reinvest in the countries where it, they were generated. So as a result, they don't bring a lot of that money back home. This is what I mean by low-hanging fruit. Because of our messed up tax code, the money stays over there. So we're not going to get revenue from it anyway. So why don't we take the tax on repatriated profits to zero? And some of that $3 trillion will come back home. That's what I mean by a no-brainer. It's low-hanging fruit. It just takes a little bit of common sense to do it. Number 11. This one was popularized by former Senator Everett Dirksen. When Congress feels the heat, they will see the light. I often get asked by skeptics, well, some of your ideas sound all well and good, but uh, you don't know how Washington works. My response is, yes, I do. It doesn't. <laughs> Why do I need to learn that? My job is to go and change Washington, D.C. Here's how we're going to do it. This is a good start on some of the things that we need to get done, and you're going to hear more. I've already rolled out my economic vision for America. Next, we're going to roll out an energy vision for America where we can get on the road to energy independence. And when Congress feels the heat, they will see the light. You're going to be my heat, the people, because this sleeping giant has awakened. So if you understand and you will what it is that we are trying to do, then you will get on the phone, you will send emails, you will make visits. This is how we're going to get things back on the right track. And then number 12, don't worry about who gets the credit. This is the United States of America. I don't want it to be the divided states of America. It's been that way before. I am planning to be a president of all the people. All Our job is to ensure a level playing field for all of the people because it does say United States of America. This gives you some idea of how Herman Cain will lead this nation as President of the United States of America. Along with some of these ideas, these guiding principles will set the tone for what we will need to do. A lot of Americans are scared to death about the future. We don't know what's going to happen to taxes at the beginning of the 2013 based upon what we know today. 
We have become a nation of crises. We have one right after another, as if we didn't already have enough crises. Now we got another one with this debt ceiling thing. People don't know what to believe. They're using scare tactics to say that the sky is going to fall in if we don't raise taxes and do some of these other things. But the fact of the matter is, we don't need rocket science in order to solve a lot of these problems. We just need some common sense in order to solve some of these problems. Uh, I understand that the state chairman of the Iowa GOP, Mr. Matt Strawn, just came in. Where's Matt? Come on in, man. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Now, he's not being partial. <laughs> he's just stopping by to say hello. Let me say that, all right? He's just stopping by to say hello. And I, knowing Matt, he's probably also done similarly for all of the other uh, Republican presidential candidates. But I want to thank you for stopping by. In addition to um, Larry and his team, where was Lisa? Lisa, Lisa's, Lisa's back here. Ian is in the back. Raise your hand, Ian. I want y'all to know who my who my peoples are, <laughs> my folks. And uh, Zach, raise your hand, Zach. Zach's also on the team. And uh, my my uh, pardon, Stephen. 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 Where's Stephen? Yep, Stephen. Stephen. He's probably out. Way back there. Oh, way back in the back. All right. So if you can't get to one of us, but I also have with me today my Deputy Chief of Staff, uh, Linda Hansen. She's here out of uh, Atlanta, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Tennessee, <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> I don't know where she lives, <laughs> but she's doing the job. And uh, is Mark Block, I saw him headed out for a moment. Mark Block is my Chief of Staff, or I call him my Chief Operating Officer. We're, run, we're running this like a business. Go figure. Uh, and guess what? It is working. It is working. That's the important thing. But again, I'm happy to have everybody here. Jim McClyman used to be the president of, uh, what was the name of that company? People's Natural. People's Natural Gas. He knows something about the gas business, okay? And you didn't know I was going to call you. And I know you're a great businessman. Thank you, sir. Because Jim's going to be on my uh, energy advisory board. He just didn't know it yet. <laughs> I'm glad you stopped by to hear about your assignment. <laughs> great guy. Was a great leader. And so, uh, again, I want to thank each and every one of you all for being here. I want to thank you for your support. It is awfully, awfully encouraging. My wife could not be here because she's babysitting now with two-year-old grandson while my son and my daughter-in-law take a little trip. Uh, you, you will see my wife with me on some of these occasions, but as she has often said, just because you don't see her doesn't mean that she doesn't support me 200%. We have been married for 43 years this year. So I don't think she's going anywhere. sends her best and she sends her regards to all of you all and uh, on behalf of everybody that's affiliated with the Herman Cain for President campaign I want to thank you for the bottom of my heart for coming out today for the grand opening uh, and thank you for all of the other hard work that we know we have you know ahead of us uh, we do have some refreshments uh, which way is the back <laughs> <laughs> that way all right so with that let me just say this to close it out um, <coughs> it was Ronald Reagan the Gipper who used to remind us and I'm going to continue to remind us with his words about this thing we call freedom we cannot take it for granted folks Ronald Reagan used to remind us that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We can't pass it on in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our grandchildren what America used to be like. I'm not going to have that conversation with my grandkids, and I don't think you want to have that conversation with your grandkids. God bless you, and thank you so much. For being here. Thank you.
Now y'all eat up those refreshments, I can't take them all home. Hey, 